Okay, let me zoom back, not in. Today what we're looking at is the second version of the Wiki robot. <coughs> and um, I've already done a video on the first version where I designed one. And this particular version was designed by YouTube's uh, Rick 100. And I liked the design, I liked the way it looked and, and, and everything it did, but I wanted to see... I didn't want to buy anything new is what it comes down to. I didn't want to buy any more N20 motors. Didn't have the money. <clears throat> but I still have a bunch of uh, the TT gear motors. And in fact I had a, a blue TT gear motor which is the one with the metal gears. And it's a 90 to 1 gear ratio so it runs slower. This particular one would run quite a bit faster. This would be the uh, 48 to 1 or something like that. At any rate, I took his... Uh, his STO files off Thingiverse and uh, started modifying them so that I, instead of putting an N20 motor in here I could put in <clears throat> a TT type gear motor and this is just to show you how it sits in there and then instead of running it on uh, three AAA batteries I'm running it on two AAA batteries and I also didn't have the same kind of little switch he liked to use I have a switch that I like to use so I changed it so I could mount my normal slide switch <clears throat> which has a 19 millimeter mounting hole to mounting hole on it and what else did I change? Oh on the body this uh, front part here is square if that shows up I ended up changing the file so that that's a cutout it's an open and then that piece can be printed separate in black so that way I could print uh, Basically, I printed in just two colors. And I had some black filament and some white filament and printed everything on the inside that you see in gray here. <clears throat> printed it in black on the final one. Hand brushed the uh, red on. Tried to uh, hand paint the wiki on the front, which is pretty much impossible to do. Did some uh, hand painting on the, uh, on the leg parts. So here's what it uh, looks like on the bottom with the switches and the round of the back. I didn't paint the red up over that. I think it looks better like this. And of course put the flashing LED in there. On this part here, the only part you can't see is in these notches that are here. There's a piece that sits right here and those notches lock it in place. And that's where the LED sits, the LED holder. So when uh, you put the motor in and you glue that cap in, then that motor is trapped. The motor really can't move anyway because when these get pushed on, see how they go into that inset that pretty much locks the uh, I can't see what I'm doing locks the motor in place so it can't lift <clears throat> originally I was thinking I would need to screw it in so I was doing that for the screws but I don't need to screw it in so I ended up using those slots as a registration for holding that uh, center LED in place um, <clears throat> when you put the gears on, of course, you just put them on in opposite order. So if the hole is down on this side, then when you put this one on, you'll want the hole up here. So right now this is wrong. You would uh, flip that around like that. So one up, one down. As long as they're the opposite, that's all that matters. Then there's a small idler gear, which is going to go here. And I'm using a 632 screw. It's an American screw, size number 6, 32 threads per inch, doesn't matter. It's just short, uh, I can't remember if it was 3 eighths or half an inch. You just don't want it so long that it would go in and, and hit the motor. But it uh, has the thickness of the gear and it has the thickness of this wall, so it shouldn't be too hard to find something that fits in there. You'll want these two to turn extremely freely, no binding whatsoever. And then the uh, rear ones get held on just like this center idler did. As you can see they would take a 632 and you would screw them in exactly the same way. And you would try to line up the two divots wherever they are so they agree with each other on this side. You'd do the same thing over on this side and line everything up. There's a, a little crank piece that Rick uses to, uh, it's basically cosmetic and uh, in this case you're going to need uh, some three millimeter uh, screws of various lengths. I think if you get something around eight millimeter you can pretty much use it for 
all the different places. But uh, I just dug around on my bins till I found some screws that would work. Whatever screw you do use needs to have a flat enough head that it will sit inside here because there's a leg piece that's going to be moving and you don't want a, a screw humped out for it to bump onto and bind. Main thing is this needs to turn free. So you put the screw in there, thread it in, it'll thread into this part, it'll turn free in this part. And that'll be set up. <clears throat> now when it comes to the legs, there's a center hole here. Again, you're going to need some three millimeter screws. In this case, they might need to be a little bit longer because you want them to go all the way through the leg, this side, and then just stick out some because they're going to ride in the slot that's in this thing. You should just kind of imagine the screw sticking through there so that the crank can move. And you go to put the legs on, it'll become obvious, uh, you know, which one goes where on which side. It'd be like that. This is the front. This is the back. So this leg's going to be kind of tilted to the rear. And then you come with the feet part. They're uh, set up so that the legs will just push in. And you can you could either just leave them pushed in or you could put a little bit of glue down in there. I noticed that Rick did have a hole there and uh, there's a semblance of a hole down inside in there. So I guess you could clean it through. Um, I didn't end up with anything visible on the bottom. But actually you really don't need it. The parts fit together so well that once I was sure everything was working I just went ahead and glued mine in. When you go to put these on to these wheels, again, you're going to need some uh, three millimeter screws that pass through here and thread into both the rear and the front gear ones, but you don't want them sticking through so far that they rub. So again, uh, something around eight millimeters long, a three millimeter screw. You can find something in your junk box. You can find something you took apart from the dollar store that'll work. <clears throat> so this one has the... Uh, the blue TT gear motor in it and uh, two AAA batteries and that's the speed that you would get on that. Now this motor would run almost twice as fast so if you wanted to make one that's uh, really scooting right along then you would use the uh, normal yellow TT gear motor dual shaft. You see it's a very good walker. Got your flashing light on top and I'll put the files for this version up on Thingiverse. I'll put links in the video down below to Rick's, um, well he has several videos, but I'll put a link to one of his videos and you can find his others from that one. But I'll also put a link to his Thingiverse files in case you want to build the version with the N20 motor. If you want to build the version with the TT motor, then I'll have a link to uh, my files up on Thingiverse. So there you have it. It's the second version of Wiki. I'll put a link to my uh, first version as well.